right now all right I just want you to do do a favor for me tonight thank you first for first of all for coming to uh, Monday's school uh, you never know who's who's in the building or who will be in the building that's never been in the building before and so right now we want to get right to it I want to thank all of you for <clears throat> being in service on yesterday those of you that were in service on yesterday those of you who were in um, marriage enrichment those of you who did not show up and did not get to sign up, you need to do so before next Sunday. To those of you that are here that have volunteered or would like to be a part of the aquatics team that deals with all of our water activity and our, um, our logo with our fishers of men, our whole fish aquarium theme here at the church. There are a lot of areas for you to work in. I'm going to meet with you personally right after Monday school in the rest <clears throat> restaurant right outside of this door. If you're a veteran or if you're a first timer, it doesn't matter how long you've been apart. I want to meet you there. So if you're listening to me now and thinking, I'd like to try to do that, then meet with me back there right after Monday school and we'll talk about it. But now, this is what I want you to do. Let God use you this evening. Okay? Let God use you. Let God use you after you've been working all day or waiting for work all day or resting from work all day. Whether you work with children, work at your home, work in a business, work around people, work by yourself, work in on getting work. Let God use you this evening. And I, I just a real simple first, first, just real simple. I'm not going to have you do anything complicated. <clears throat> but sometimes when people talk about God using them, you know, you want to walk on water. That's good. But if you can't make it out the house in rainy weather, quit, quit trying to walk on water, you know. If you can't, hey man, you wanna, you wanna make the blind see, but you can't even look other people in their face. Uh, get them, get in, look in the face part first, okay? So, t so here's what you do: take your, take your hands, either of them, and put them in somebody's hands next to you. This is God using you right now, okay? Now I know when you came in, you wanted to sit separate seats, a whole bunch of distance, but somebody got to move. You're you, you looking at the person, come down here. They're looking at you, no, you come down here. Okay, <clears throat> so y'all fighting right now. Just, just. So some of you have decided, well, since there's nobody here, I'm just going to put my hand down. Go find somebody. Connect with them. I'm just asking, let God use you. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't know tricks and all that stuff here in this church. This is, this is not, but just get somewhere, and I'm going to wait until you are touching somebody else because I don't want to start this prayer with your disobedience, and you'll be one of the first ones asking God to do something. God said, I ask you first. All I want you to do is touch somebody that I have touched. Okay? You touch somebody that I have touched, and I want somebody that has been touched by me to touch you. It's real simple. It's real simple. 
See, we have a connection in here. And, and when people see that others are connected, they do two things. They either want to get connected or they get busy separating. All right. So all you're doing is just touching somebody. Is that uncomfortable for anybody yet? Don't answer out loud because I don't know who you're touching. That could be uncomfortable for you. I guarantee you if somebody walked in here right now and saw me touching this dude on his shoulder, they go, okay, what's that all about? Either, either you're going to sing or let the man play. <laughs> but I'm just being obedient. You, you notice one thing about what I'm doing, though? His hands are occupied. He's doing something, and I'm doing something else. I'm touching him. He's touching the keyboard. Maybe there's a song coming into my spirit. You just don't know. I didn't mean it was one I was going to sing. Maybe it's a lyric. <laughs> and, and, and right now, if you're touching someone who has a bad spirit, is it, maybe today was a good day for you. Because we all have those days where they're... And, and maybe, maybe your good day is, is transferring into their bad day. I know what you're thinking right now. You want me to pray for you. You want me to pray for you. You want me to pray so you can pray out loud. You, you really think this is about me praying. This is about you being obedient. We're going to study in our lesson tonight about somebody who touched Jesus and never prayed. And got healed. You may be seated. We talked yesterday about doing the impossible i want to get right to it because yesterday we ran out of time and got out of church too early <laughs> we didn't get out too early we got out on time so now we're right here we're right here with our lesson tonight in monday school it's real simple all we do in monday school is teach the word of god just take the scripture break it down get into a simplistic a form of hearing the word and mainly what we do is get in a routine of listening to God okay a routine of listening to God have you ever blessed your food and then started eating and then halfway through it stopped and said did I bless my food and, and now I want everybody in the church to come to the front of the church if you can come to the front of the church if you can't come to the front of the church I want you to stay as far back as you can but if you can come to the front of the church I want you to come to the front of the church to the empty seats next to somebody who needs to touch you Amen. sometimes we come in and we immediately camp out in the back I, I, my, my staff is not back there or nothing is back there nothing is back there except people who want to be back there the rest of us are up here because that's where and, and when they use the word obedience, it's like sometimes you just, you got to get in the habit of just being obedient. It's amazing when we come to church, sometimes some, some parents who are the most disobedient in ministry want their children to always do something for them. And, and mama, you, you never smile. You never shake anybody's hand. You never say amen. You never hallelujah when the pastor asks us to do things. And daddy, you don't. And so they watch that. So let's start modeling what God's going to transform. That wasn't some kind of a, a one of those confrontational um, um, insensitive comments. I just, that's what Monday school is. This is just where we all learn. Boy, I learned so much in Monday school. I, I love for, I, I love church. I love Sunday morning church. But I love when God does something like real different here at Monday school. All right? All right. So I'm going to wait till some of our walkers start, you know, moving down front because I know what it's like to, you know, man, I'm trying to get in there and, and we're getting in from work and, and stuff. Hey, hey, man, at least y'all got to leave work. You'll get that way. Somebody will explain it to you in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Y'all got to leave work and go to church. Boy, you don't know what it's like to, 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 to leave work and still be at church. <laughs> I'm good as long as I'm at church. Anybody else? Boy, the minute church is over, that's when yeah, you kind of have, have to watch us. Because we, we, if every day we could be in church all day, we would be all right. But after we leave church, we got to deal with reality. We have to deal with the world. We have to deal with ourselves being away from the covering of people around us. And we have to have that relationship with God. Yesterday, as we talked about um, doing, doing the impossible, at some point in all of our lives, we've got to come to this stage in life with God. And God is doing something again, again in this ministry. I have... 
I have lived to watch God do some amazing things. And now I'm watching God do it again. I'm watching him do it again. I'm enjoying watching God doing it again. <clears throat> and I appreciate God doing it again. So I want you, if you get your notes out and get your pencils and papers, if you want to write, you can. If you don't want to write, you don't have to. <clears throat> there's someone in this room, and there's always someone in this room, always someone in some specific place where God starts to speak. There is someone um, that God is putting probably a demand on you that you are not able to fulfill. Um, in some cases, God has interrupted your schedule in a lot of cases God has made a demand on a on a gift that you didn't even know you had sometimes you've asked God for work you ask God for more you've asked God for more money so you've already decided how you were going to get it and God interrupted your plan and and because you weren't in touch with him really like word based I mean like really saying God whatever your will is and, and just lead me and guide me when, when, when God started opening doors in places that you were not prepared for, you might be careful because you might rebuke God. You might tell the devil he's a lie and God's going, that's not the devil. And, 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 and one thing, devil is not going to ever want you to progress. Ever. That, that's a difference. He does not want you to progress. He doesn't want you to climb because it takes faith to climb. It takes a hookup to just change. No, the enemy will change stuff for you just so that you won't believe that God had to use you through that process. So tonight we, we talked yesterday about a remarkable man in the Bible. His name was, was, was Peter. And um, he's just remarkable. I had no idea that God was going to stop us right there. And there was so much that God started to reveal about Peter uh, in, the, in the word yesterday. It was just, it was, it was remarkable. It was tremendous. I love the story of Peter. I love the kind of person um, that we are through someone like Peter because we have, we have learned from him. And what we learn the most and what we all, all, all keep saying it over and over again. And what I want to thank you all about for Monday School is, is, is realistically, there is not a whole lot more left in the Bible except them second comings and them beasts and them horns and them dragons. You know, when you pick a revelation and you get scared, like, oh, Lord. And then you put it down and go back to Psalms. All right, you should, you know. <laughs> you ever pick the Bible up and you start thinking about them dragons and them gates and them horns and them frogs and them seven beasts and you start looking like these sound like some of my kids <laughs> that's that was I shouldn't say that but 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 usually God says I want to take what you know and I want to build on it why why is God talking to us about stuff we already know because God wants you to know very well how to explain his word to somebody else if somebody comes into your life and starts talking about dragons and beasts and crickets and in the last days, it's like, look, man. But that's how most of us got saved, for real. We did. We, we did. We didn't get saved. We got scared. Tell the truth. Preachers started talking about the moon was orange. And you look at that one night, it was orange moon. Like, oh, Lord. I don't know how you guys grew up in church, but we did, man. And we could never have fun in church. We were never allowed to laugh in church. I think laughing in church was like the number one sin. But church was so funny. That was, everything in church was funny to me. And I couldn't wait to get my own church and just have fun. Because there were things in church, my, my favorite whipping, I, we got hit in church, amen. Now I know it's against the law to say hit, but that's what we got, and amen. And, and, and we need to bring it, never mind. So anyway, <laughs> but we got hit in church because we laughed at people in church. Because church people were hilarious. Growing up, there was a church woman that always had her favorite hum in a corner. Nothing was going on. And all the kids, you know, would, somebody would touch you. All it takes is one of those right there in church. And then your face gets full and it's one idiot always in the church. You can't do that. And that would just be it. And man, we would, we would just start laughing. And, 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 but it was so serious. 
it was so serious. And as we grow older now, the same people that we laughed about, that prayed and shouted, now our kids, um, they, they need, I'm going to, uh, hear me when I say this, y'all. Watch me real careful. They, they need some, um, they need to, and, and I don't mean poke fun at, because I thought we were poking fun at, but we were learning how to praise and didn't know it. P- please don't take what I'm saying wrong. But I think it's time, I think it's good, not time, because our children are having it here. I think it's good that they are learning um, how to praise, even if they don't understand it yet. Because there was something about when church music came on, we clapped and we praised God. We didn't tussie roll. Okay, y'all did, we didn't. There was a difference between music that honored God and music that produced flesh. There was a difference, and we knew the difference, right? Anybody here ever got a spanking for uh, singing at the table? Y'all remember stuff like that? Don't sing at the table. I don't, I don't know why, but I remember almost getting a whoop until I had to change that version of the script. You remember we used to pray the prayer in a song? God is good and God is great. Something like that. God is great and God is good. Let us thank him for our food. Amen. And then you start eating. You couldn't sing after that. And I remember one time I was over at my grandma's house and I started singing something else, you know. What you saying? And God is good. I learned a lot. And so we come to Monday school because we're still learning a lot. You're learning that when people come to church, they're not always ready to hear from God. And so sometimes they don't hear from God. They're watching you. And sometimes your life is not, you're not sometimes at 100. You're kind of drifting through Christianity at a, at a 60. But even at a 60, that's still a light for somebody who's dark. Man, every week I get a chance, I get a chance, it's an opportunity to preach to people who have broken lives, to talk to people who have broken homes, to talk to people who um, are down and out. And sometimes the only people they can get angry with are the people that God sent that could handle their arguments. And so yesterday we talked about this guy, Peter. And, and please forgive me if I get too relaxed. I'm not trying to get too relaxed, but, but I feel good when I'm in the zone where God is using me. <clears throat> I, I feel good. I get comfortable here. Because I used to be uptight because I used to be real uh, particular about people who were critics because critics would criticize the sermon. And God is saying, forget the critics. I'm trying to talk to another one of my kids. And so what we did just a minute ago, just holding somebody, God, I guarantee you what God did was allowed somebody to be strengthened by your obedience. You could be going through so much yourself, but, but you're still in the right place. And so we held hands. And those of you who came a little later, we just finished holding hands. We didn't pray, but God still did something. I am by no means telling us not to pray. We don't do that. <clears throat> we pray without ceasing. We pray all the time. But at some point, you need to understand that God has put something in your hands that someone else needs in their lives. Whoa. <clears throat> and I'm talking to people who have made it a habit um, of, of not touching. And so we get in church sometimes, in special church of any size like this, and we say, hey, let's, let's practice tonight not being separated for a minute. Everywhere in our lives, we are challenged by people who separate us. So this, this story about doing the impossible, it's still so amazing to me that we can talk about doing the impossible because most people don't believe that until you really need to do that. Okay, scenario, question. There's a sign up, big sign up, says absolutely no swimming under no conditions. 
absolutely no swimming under no conditions. And your son or daughter couldn't read, jumped in the water. You passed by. Sign says no swimming under no conditions. And your son or daughter starts to drown. You can't swim. They're in deep water. What are you going to do? Are you going to disobey the sign and go in after them? Or are you going to obey the sign and maybe drown yourself? Ooh. Wow. Within your little group, discuss that for a minute. No, go ahead. <laughs> Girl, I ain't come to church to play no riddles. I didn't come for no riddles. I came for a word. Anybody? Go ahead. Within yourself, kind of discuss what you would do. Obey the sign and let your child drown or disobey the sign and you drown too. Okay, and stop. Who came up with the right answer? Raise your hand. Okay, there's a hand back there. CC, I'm gonna ignore yours. There's a hand right here. No, I'm just going to quit playing with her. No, I'm going to ignore your hand. Uh, uh, okay, Maya, what, 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 did you, what, would you, what would your answer? You would, you would throw a lifesaver at the person in the water. You sit up thinking about candy and your child is drowning. <laughs> what flavor are you going to do? A strawberry, a grape, or a lemon? What you going to do? Kids out there drowning, you're here. Has a lifesaver. Hope you have good breath. No. So you would throw something to them. Because if you got in yourself, you would drown. And, okay, so you can't go in. They can't come out. So you would send something that could connect for them. Makes sense to me. Right? So is that, is that our relationship with God? Sometimes there are things that we see going on. We can't go to them. And they can't get out. But maybe God gives us something to help get people out of it. Very good, very good suggestion. Um, because that's how important prayer is to us. Sometimes I don't know how to help people. And people get disappointed with me because I may know how to help. Oh, watch this. I don't want to come down there right now. I may know how to help, but God's not releasing me to help. Because once you become somebody's lifeline, <laughs> Come on now. They never seek him anymore. There are friends of yours that will give up on you because you could not help them the next time. Watch this. You could help them, but God wouldn't let you help them. I've watched God keep me broke until they got their answer. Then God released me some money. No, really. When they asked, I didn't have what they needed. And when their character came forth, God released it to me because he wanted their faith stronger. And sometimes being a loving, kind, tender person that I am and that you are, we sometimes hinder other people's faith. They can't get past being addicted because you keep supplying them. Is this okay? We're talking about doing the impossible. So there's your son out there. And Maya said, throw that kid a life, a lifeline. I'm going to call it lifeline instead of lifesaver because I go to church with people that really would throw peppermints. Okay. So now you throw the lifeline, Maya. What is their responsibility? Huh? Okay, stand up for a minute. What is their responsibility? I throw the lifeline and what is their responsibility out there in the water? To do what? To grab it. To accept it. Can you make them accept it? If they don't accept it, what's going to happen? They could possibly go under. Now, 
Amaya, stand back up. The person drowning, do they need you to tell them they're drowning? Okay, I'm going to go way back old school now. Do they need to t- you to tell them that they're not flapping their arms right? Do they need you to tell them that they're slowly going down? What did they need you to do up there? Roll out the lifeline. People, okay, thank you. Talk about doing the impossible. People on alcohol don't need you to tell them they drink. Do they? They already know it. They know, they know the name of it. You call it liquor. They can tell you it's not liquor. They got a name for it. People that smoke weed, they don't need you to tell them they smoke weed. Look at your neighbor and say, show don't. Now, don't. Don't look at anybody. Just look at you. Now y'all looking up like, what? 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 You mean the herb that God supplied? Okay. Right? People that are sinning don't need you to tell them they're sinning. Because we're Monday school now. We're Monday school. We're different. It's a little different. People that are out in the world don't need us to tell them they're in the world. What they need us to do is throw out a lifeline. What we just did in Monday school before we started, I didn't ask you to pray for anybody. Ask anybody at all what they were in. Everybody in this room has been separated from God before. And God, when he couldn't reach you spiritually, he threw out a lifeline. (laughs) Okay. See, the first thing that you have to believe is that God threw out the lifeline. Okay, 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 okay. So so the, the challenge becomes when people don't believe Jesus. And Satan loves that. And he'll give you all kinds of background to not believe that because if you don't believe that there is a lifeline you're not going to grab it it's sitting right there and sometimes who would believe that somebody would throw you a rope who would care enough about you to throw you a rope after you got your own self in trouble this is how now because this church this year is gonna, we're gonna be real strong about evangelism. Not, not the evangelism class kit that people give out, not the online study. I'm talking about the walk through it and watch somebody come in because you threw them out of line. I'm talking about that cousin that you've given up on that told you to go straight to hell because you can't bother me. I'm talking about the one that cursed you. I want you in this room tonight to go back and put your mouth on them and say, I declare in Jesus' name that my cousin, my whatever, is going to grab the lifeline. If you don't make the connection, they may never come in. And that's doing the impossible. That's doing the impossible. Yo, it's, 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 it's kind of nerve-wracking when God uses you. Lord, let me get through with the notes tonight, please. Yes, sir, Jesus. But, but God's talking to somebody again. Here we go. But it's, but it's kind of impossible sometimes for us to believe that God could use somebody just like you to save someone as powerful as the person who's jealous of you or who hates you. It, when, you, when you finally mature spiritually, you won't want to see your enemies suffer. But until you grow spiritually, it's pretty fun to watch. <laughs> mm, Lord, don't like ugly. Mm, I'm so serious. <laughs> you enjoy watching people that curse you out. Something happened with them and they get hit with or something and they go to walking like, mm-hmm. Don't play with God, children. You know, we, we use God. Satan will attack people, and, and we put God in the middle of it. And God says, no, now what I, since, since you noticed that, I'm going to need you to lay hands on them and bring them out. Man, I remember about the first three or four times that God used me to bless people that I couldn't stand. You don't even give them a whole prayer. I'm just telling you about my problems. 
God would use me to go and bless people. You know those people you can't stand? I mean, okay, well, we couldn't stand them. I, I, they, man, they can't bother me now. But you couldn't stand them. And, and then they get sick and God uses you to go pray for them. And you go like, God, do I have to give them like the whole prayer? Do I have to like touch and agree? Do I have to call you out in Jesus' name? Do I rebuke him? Or do I just have to say, Lord have mercy, like that. God said, no, I want you to cast out every demon. I want you to stand by them. And then God will do things like, then I want you to help them physically pay for something. Show them that you are a giver and that you are for giving and not against giving. And I believe that it's impossible for some people to experience God because you're not for giving yet. Anybody ever made a mistake in here? Raise your hand. I'm looking at some of y'all on camera. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. See, what you just did was throw God a lifeline. I didn't say the lifeline had to come out here. Your lifeline is there. Because sometimes you need help and you go, God, I can't reach you. God said, okay, just give me a little bit and I'll reach the rest of the way. And so sometimes you see us in church with our hands up. We're not trying to poke fun at somebody's religious rituals. Sometimes I just say, Lord, I just need some, I need some help. My, my physical body needs some help right now. But, but right now I need to be forgiven. And if I am forgiving, guess what he is? Forgiving to me. Okay, you can put your hands down. So what God wants to do with you, with the impossible. <laughs> I just heard something. It was, it was, I was spiritual, but then a little flesh got in it. Raise your hand again. Now, try to clap with that hand up there. <laughs> Never mind. So sometimes I'm immature, but it's okay. But I just imagine someone wanting to clap. Now, you got to decide whether you're going to praise or, or, or raise your hand. <laughs> so here is Peter, right? And he's in this boat. And we love the story of Peter. We had a great time with him yesterday. And he didn't know it was Jesus um, because he did say, you know, if it's really you, God, let me come out. Now, again, God is back in this message. We're trying to get past it. But I just know that the other side of your freedom is in this message. It's in this message of all the stories. And this is not even my favorite story of the Bible. My favorite story is like in the book of St. Mark. But in all the messages that God is going to use, Sister Olson, to just release you, it's this one right here of Peter. Because there are times when you need God and the question is, Lord, if that's you, let me know that that's you. Because our, 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 our speculation is, God, why are you out here in my mess? See, because we have this habit of when we've done God wrong or doing wrong, we run from everybody, so we think we run from God. And so you duck right here, and God is down here, and you go, hey, <laughs> what are you doing down here? God said, I, that's where I knew you would end up. As a matter of fact, God says, I was down there before you ducked down. And I know, I know, I know. And I'm not being redundant. I just got to make sure it's clear before we move forward. And so he said, Peter, then, yeah, it, it's me. Don't be afraid. And he's saying that to you tonight. You're going to hear some things tonight that's going to sound like something God has said to you. And God says, Qu quit acting um, spooky scared. It's me. Be not afraid. And so Peter said, like us, God, okay, if this is you talking tonight through this man, just say something. Just say a sentence or something. Or call a name out or say a street or some kind of an example so that I will know that it's you. And Jesus said to him, okay. Peter said, if it's you, let me come to you like that. And so he said, come. Peter stepped out of the boat. Peter's friend stayed back. Here's another message for those of you who are trying to do the impossible. Sometimes it is so impossible for you to live your life when your friends and everybody else stays in the boat. See, you're that person who says, I don't have anything to do with this Friday night. Why? Because all my friends are in the boat and I've stepped into Christian. I've stepped out of it. I'm going to Jesus. Now, you can amen that if you want to or you can look at me cross-headed like a German shepherd. But every Friday night, every weekend, every so-and-so, every once in a while, you're going to be challenged with that same thing. 
Because the people you love, the people that you care for, the people who brought you through your stuff and knew you, and sh they're still in the boat. It would be great if all of y'all went to Jesus together. But let's just face it. Some of y'all went to church together, but maybe all of you didn't go to Jesus together. Two people can go to the same church, hear the same sermons, go to the same services, uh, write down the same notes, attend the same, they get the same praise, give the same offerings, and then two totally different things can happen in their lives because one did it, but the other believed it. I don't know what's, how disappointing it is for you to have friends and people who say, well, we both in the same church, we both gave together, tied together. Why you have this and I have that? Because sometimes they will, they'll just do it and they just don't believe it. And he said, Peter, if, if, if you want to, uh, since, the, since you made the deal, God didn't even make the deal. Peter made the deal. If it's you, let me come. God didn't say, if you don't believe it's me, come. You get that? You ever thought about it like that? Some of you right now are waiting on God. God, if you want me to shout, do something. <laughs> Touch me right now and I'll jerk. Mm-hmm. You remember people like that? Uh, no, I don't believe in all that praise and stuff because mine is going to be real. Whenever God hit me, it's going to be real. God said, if you, if you want to see real, praise me first. Just, just do that. I used to hold back on my praise because I was like some of those people because you hear that growing up. Honey, I don't play with God. They need to quit playing with God. He... When, when you don't know him, he's God. <laughs> when you know him, he's God. I don't play with God. You know they are. Oh. And so some of you right now might be saying, you know, they do all of that. I don't do all of that because all of that's not necessary. Now remember, if you're drowning and the rope is thrown, you have to make an effort. Oh, man, is this getting, it's not, right? So, Peter had to make an effort. And he stepped out there, and he did good like all of us do, and he slipped like all of us do. Now, repeat after me. He slipped like all of us do. Now, the playing field is even. So, you can look around this room, and you can tell someone else they're hypocrites, and I see these people in here doing this, and I saw those people in there doing that. I'm not giving any excuses for anybody to mess up and try to, you know, bogart your way into Christianity. But he slipped. And I believe that this is a great account of God saying to us that when you try your best to come to me, you're going to fall. And when you fall, and everybody said, not if. See, because that was the great deceiver for me. I thought if I fell, I didn't know that falling was a part of it. And if nobody teaches you that falling is a part of it, you're going to think you're a failure. No, failure is when you don't get up. <laughs> right? So falling is a part of this thing. And, and he fell and he started to sink. But he, he didn't go under because Jesus was there to lift him up. And he walked with him back to the boat and the other boys stayed in him. Now, write these notes down if you, if you want to know how this is going to benefit your life and why we're here tonight. Number one, write down, he calls you out. That's the first thing he does. He calls you out. Okay? He calls you out. So, stop, being, stop complaining about being so lonely. God said to himself, it's not good for man to be alone. He didn't say it wasn't good for man to be lonely because where God is in your life, you're never lonely. Sometimes you're just alone. You're just, you're just away from people. There's no one around you. But he calls you out. Now, he's calling you out before they bury you. I don't know who I'm talking to. And it's okay because I'm not talking to you. The Holy Spirit is talking to you because you ain't in my notes right now and you're messing with my notes. But God brought you out here tonight to talk to you, Okay. And I promised God when I was 10 years old, God, you can use me to do your will. And then when God started using me and people started disliking me, <clears throat> I said, God, I changed my mind. Because I didn't like being used by God. I'm going to tell you the truth. I did not. Because being used by God 
causes you to be lonely and alone. <clears throat> because you, when God starts to use you, you just start being weird. So right now you're supposed to be talking about one thing and God's saying, no, I need your mouth to talk to somebody else who's drowning. She's looking good. Her hair is fixed. His mustache is right. Clothes are fitting. Drove up in nice things, but they're drowning. And they don't believe in here. She doesn't believe that anybody loves her. She doesn't believe that she's going to ever make it out. I need you to tell her tonight to not even expect to wake up tomorrow with the same issue. Tonight, God said, I'm going to fix her. But you need to tell her. You don't have to know her name. You don't have to know where he's from. Tell him and her tonight that the reason you're going through so much is because God called you out. Now, Satan got involved with it and tried to make you think it's over. But God called you out and, and you may have lost everything. You didn't lose everything. You left everything. I need somebody who knows him to praise him right there. Just a minute. I need somebody who knows you didn't lose anything. But at some point you had to leave some things. And you were so attached to it that it looks like you lost it. But if you look back now, what you lost has been restored. And what you thought you couldn't do without, you're doing so much better. Okay, so I just, we just had everyone's way. I got to take a little praise break like that. Because you got to write that down. First of all, just like with Peter, he, this is point, he, 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 he calls you out. And when he calls you out, babies, he got plans for us. Dude, look at me, and I don't mean dude. Okay, do that. So you know what I'm but He called me out when I was a kid. How, do you, how would you like to live knowing every sin in your life you commit, you commit while you were a Christian? I'm thinking, God, you should at least let me wait till I was like 40 so I could choose my own sins, you know, you know. Didn't get to drink, didn't get to smoke weed, didn't get to cuss nobody out, didn't get to shoot, bust a cap in no, you know. So. How you gonna go to high school saved? Man, that ain't fun. You can't even rap to nobody. I thought you was a Christian. I'm still a boy. I'm short, and y'all know my story, my testimony. I'm born short, grew up short. All my friends call me shouty. <laughs> Tried to go with a girl in the sixth grade. She picked me up. You don't pick up nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frustrated early in life. Cause I'm trying to go with her, and, and I'm telling people, you know, that's my girl, and she telling people, you know, that's the I want, I want you to, that's my little brother. <laughs> I want to be your brother. I want to be your man. <clears throat> <laughs> frustrating me, frustrating me early, and I'm saved. Sometimes I hear bad words, and I wanted to use them, and I couldn't, cause God had my mouth. So I just bit my lip and did stuff. But he called me. He called me out. He called me out. He called me. Ah, shoot. He called me away from my mom. And he called me out because the environment I was in would not allow me to be ready for you when you needed to come out. God knew if I had stayed in that environment, Satan would have robbed me and I would not be here for you. See, I never knew that the gift you needed, God would put in me to deliver to you. That's why Monday school is so precious. Because it's not about me getting likes or people following me. It's about one person in this room tonight being told with confidence, you didn't set yourself up. He called you out. Stop being hard on yourself, sister. He called you out. 
and your life is not bad. You just got called out while it was good. Stop thinking that people get called out of people that are wayward and depressed and, and ugly and pitiful and bad. You got it all together, but he called you out. Okay, that was number one, and this is number two right quick. Then when he calls you out, secondly, he walks with you. When he called Peter out of the boat, he called him out. And then when Peter got to him, remember Peter failed. So I guarantee you when God calls you out, you're going to fall sometimes. You're just going to fall. Okay, you're going to fall. And, and, and Peter didn't do anything. He just... It looked like he was doing bad in front of people who thought he was going to be like Jesus. And so, number two, he walks with you. And that's what I just want to tell you now tonight. That when he calls you out, he walks with you. Okay. Somebody in here, until you learn that it's from the enemy, you're going to keep tolerating the sickness and the illness and the disease on your body. You're going to say, well, I was just born like that. And God, no, 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 no. If, if God ever allowed you to have something, he wants you to call it out. And he wants you to teach somebody else how to walk with him while you're walking with that. And he's walking with you. And so he's walking with you. And, and let me say this. You know what's so cool? Jesus allowed all of Peter's friends to see him walking with Peter. Here is what's so important to me about that. <clears throat> He's allowing all of your friends to see you walk with him. They all go to church too. I said two. Two. Okay, fine. More. They all go to church more. Okay, forget you then. Okay, a lot. They all go to church a lot fine they all go to church more than you more than you okay see so the people that you thought yeah they're doing the same thing the difference is you got proof that he's walking with you so that brings me to tonight who you walking with now? He called you out. Now he's walking with you. But your question that you got to answer is who are you walking with now? For the record, I'd like to point out, and I'm trying to get out Peter real quick, that, that none of the other guys ever even got out of the boat. Just remember that now. You're going to get penalized, criticized, and really, really dogged out for being a Christian. But remember, it never would have happened had you not gotten out the boat. One day you put the can down. One day, one day you put the porn down. One day you put the liquor down. One day you put the bad language down. And that was your stepping out of the boat. You were comfortable in your own sin, doing your own thing, because that's what got you, it kept you okay. That made you cool. That made you all right. That kept you popular. But one day you decided, I'm going to leave that back here. And then you went out there. And that's when you fail. And a lot of people can write a story about what you did wrong. And I want to give you six words. But at least you got out. Y'all, it takes a lot of faith to get out of the boat. It doesn't take faith to stay in the boat. That's that, that's that shout music would have came on if I was somewhere else right now. <clears throat> it, it takes a lot of faith to get out of the boat. The boat is where we're safe. It, it takes a lot of faith to get out and get your own apartment and tell him. <laughs> no, no, I'm not condemning. I'm not trying to get a laugh or anything. But it takes a lot of faith for you to get your own apartment and tell her, I'm going to try this paying my own bills thing. It, 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 
takes a lot of faith to, to put a car in your name. It's not the car you want it, but it's the car you can afford. And now when they get mad at you, they can't take it back. Because it's in your name. You got three tires. One of them's a May Pop. The other two are bicycle tires. I don't know. What. <laughs> People laughing at you going down the street, but it's yours. Yeah, you wobbling, but, it, but it's yours. And it's in your name. That takes a lot of faith. It takes a lot of faith to give an offering in church. I'm telling you, it does. That just looks like, what can I do with that money? A lot of faith. That takes a lot of faith. That's, see, that boat is our comfort zone. It takes a lot of faith. Do your hands like this. Okay, that's okay, put them down. See, you did that because I said so. It takes a lot of faith to do that when nobody tells you. That takes a lot of faith. And once you ever become one of those noisy people in church, you are noisy for life. Whenever you break out, you just break out. And people that don't break out, they just don't break out. They just, it takes a lot of faith one of these days to say, yes, Lord. Just, that's a, it takes a lot of faith to do that. And if you don't ever do that like in the restroom or the closet or in the house mopping, you can't practice that in front of us. Because if you do that at church for the first time, it sounds like this. Yes, Lord. That's what it sounds like. And you'll be like, oh, man, what did I do? So you got to practice that sometime. But it takes a lot of faith to do that. If you ever get in the spirit and you start dancing, and I don't mean cabbage patching because, you know, we do a lot of different stuff now. But if you just start dancing and allow God to just release you and move you, it takes a lot of faith. And when, and when that's happening, see, God is walking with you now. Because you got out the boat. You, 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 you know, he's walking with you. And then he's wondering, then he's asking you a question, who's walking with you now? Because the first time you start dancing in the spirit, you might want to write this down, uh, this is a Rick key. The first time you start dancing in the spirit, now you got to decide which party you're going to. Because when you start dancing in the spirit, you start getting invited to stuff to see how much you're going to dance. So anyway, yep, Peter did fail. But he got up again. God can always help a man deal with failure. Always know that. Now the Bible says, the Bible says this, the Bible says this. And, and we know this scripture, but somebody in here tonight, somebody online who says I'm not up to coming to church, but I'll watch y'all. Because God has blessed me now with a good job and a good future and a good career. And I got to, I got to, I got to put some overtime in. I'm talking to that person who feels like you need two jobs because you wouldn't be consistent with one tithe. I'm just telling you, God is not going to tell you to take a job that's going to take away from your time with him. No, no, no. Pastor, what should I do? What he told you to do. Bible says this, the steps of a good man. Peter's out of the boat. You're out of the boat. You're walking toward Jesus. You're walking with Christ. Now, I got to keep bringing this up, y'all. I'm not trying to glorify this, but we keep seeing so many people stop being Christians because being a Christian, you messed up. The first thing Peter did when he decided to go to Jesus was fall. It wasn't praise. He failed, okay? And I, I'm not trying to get you to fail, <laughs> but I'm trying to get some of you who have failure written all over you to get up. You, we walk in church like we failed in the parking lot. You sit and listen to a sermon like someone who's just fallen. It's obvious sometimes to those of us who have fallen. You quit judging me. We're not judging you. You're bruised. We're looking at you. So, he said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Now, now watch this. If the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and you fall. So now, 
I can at least be happy because I know that falling was on my schedule. <laughs> See, and the reason some of your falling hurts so bad is you trying to walk like her. You fell with flats. She fell with nine inch nails. Did you get that? I don't know what nine inch nails, what nine, that's a group, but nine inch them, the shoes. She, she fell up here. I remember when I was in the sixth grade, I was like five, six. And then platform shoes went out of style. I was so depressed I, didn't, I wouldn't go anywhere. Because now people know my real side. Every girl I ever tried to talk to, I talked to in the lunchroom while she was sitting down. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't. See, trying to be like other people might be impressive to some of you. But at some point, you got to look at your own hair in the mirror. You got to look at your own body in the mirror. You got to look at your own form in the mirror. You got to see your own complexion in the mirror. You got to look at your own eyes in the mirror. You got to look at your own eyelashes. At some point, you got to take that all off and say, God. This is it. And so your steps are ordered. All I'm trying to do is help you to have confidence in what the master created. And, and stop being ashamed of what the world tried to reproduce. They can't do you. So the minute you step out and, and try to be you in him, you may fall now or you may fall later. But falling is a part of your schedule. The problem is prideful people act like they don't fall. Let me tell you something. If you got a one-bedroom apartment, your rent is as important as somebody with a six-bedroom house. Both of y'all have house notes. Somebody's tripping, talking about, girl, if I had your money, I'd be, if you had that money, you'd still get put out. <laughs> it just take three or four U-Hauls to move you. Stay right there. Stay right there. A good man, steps a good man are ordered by the Lord. I got this watch that I wear. It's like, a, it's like a Fitbit watch. So like every day I try to do like, I don't try to, I never pay attention to it. I just look at it every once in a while. So some days I'll have like 15,000 steps. Some days like 22,000 steps. So I'm thinking to myself, how this thing gonna keep up with me? So now I'm just racing the watch. And it's amazing that this thing is keeping up with me. So sometimes I do that thing like I would do sometimes when I was growing up and I was very immature. I would walk in front of people and try to make them figure out what was wrong with me. I would move, but they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So I would keep my hands to my side, but I would walk like this. And folk are looking like, what is that? What? I just wouldn't move. Because see, most people walk like this. No, I'm so I'm like this. And then I really threw them off. Sometimes they sit at the red light looking at me and I go, And then, of course, I grew up. But I do sometimes. So when I'm walking and I know this thing is counting my steps, sometimes I'll go backwards. And it gives me credit for going forward. <laughs> so if you ever see me going through the church, I'm not trying to be Michael Jackson. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go back and take some steps up. And I'm sorry in life you can't take those steps back. Because the clock still clicks. Even if you're going backwards. And the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And, and it says he delighted in his way. But watch this. Watch this very next verse. Pow. Though he fall. I thought this was going to say if. Though means when. Come on. Bible. God ordered my steps. Hallelujah. He walked with me, and he talked with me, and he tells me I am his own. <laughs> then you're down on your knee. Precious Lord, <laughs> take my hand. Okay. It comes right back and says, though, though he fall, he shall not utterly, he shall not be utterly cast down. 
for the Lord. Okay, Peter, I'm talking to you. Peter, Sister Peter, Brother Peter in here. You know, can, we can throw you a pity party. We can call a lot of people and tell them you're going through something. But God says, listen, if you're going to get back up, you're going to need my hand. Okay, let's take the practice again. Lift it up like that. Come on. Remember that thing we did earlier? Ha <laughs> ha! Sometimes, Lord, I can't explain what's going on, but I saw in your word that if I'm down, I won't be cast down. But the Lord upholded me with his hand. But I got to, I got to, I got to reach up. Okay, put it down. Amaya, what did you say? I throw out the lifeline. And what's my responsibility? If I throw you out the lifeline, what's your responsibility? You got to reach out for it. Listen, if you come to church and keep sitting by people who are stopping you from reaching out, go to, the other, go to another section. Go to the unreaching out section. And, and leave that section. Go to the reaching out section. That's what you do. Yeah. Sit in church long enough and say, these people I'm sitting with don't never reach. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Just, just, just make up an excuse to get up. I got to go. This section, every time I'm here, this lady want me to read her iPad. She want me to talk to her. She telling me about a man looking at her. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I need to go to, I need to get in a section that stop being comfortable. What a promise. If we fall, God will pick us back up. Y'all, that sounds like some easy stuff to talk about and shout about. But when you fall, sometimes you hit hard. You hit so hard, everybody else asks, what was that? Okay. You said it was nothing. But when you get up, there's all kinds of stuff on you. And the man who falls, there was not a failure. Remember, the person who fails to reach his goal the first time is not a failure. You, you, yeah, I'm going to school three times. I failed out three times. I've been in a relationship four times. I tried to have children here. Tried to raise my kids. Tried to be a good uh, employee. Tried to be, but I can't get it right. The person who never tries, that's the person who fails right there. Some of you have more failures on your records because you keep trying more than most people. Stop trying to judge yourself by your cousin, your sister, your brother, your other church members. Those folk have not tried as much as you've tried. You've been in some embarrassing situations, but in every situation, God brought you out because he saw you trying. There are some folk in your life sitting back waiting on you to be blessed so y'all can get hooked up. Man, I happen like that. A person who never tries is really the failure before you ever get started. So, got two words for you right quick. Be ready. Okay. Because now God is telling you, and he's told you before, I've called you out of the boat. The problem is, when God calls you out of the boat, you got to be ready. Right? So, Sister Campbell, stand up for a minute. I got two Sister Campbells. I got the real Sister Campbell. <laughs> I got the other Sister Campbell. No. I didn't look at, I just looked in that direction. But when Sister Campbell heard her name, she didn't check to see which Sister Campbell. She said, I'm ready. All right. The real sister Campbell, raise your hand. <laughs> All right, y'all sit down. You get it? I don't know how you got into the family of God, but be ready. I don't know if you're a third generation Christian. I don't know if your mom or daddy married some Christians. But when he calls your name, you be ready. One of them has been Sister Campbell for a long time. How, how many years you been Sister Campbell, Sister Campbell? The one in the blue shirt. How many years you been Sister Campbell? Almost 50 years. How many years you been Sister Campbell? Seven years. Sister Campbell, stand up. Harry, quickly. 
been in Jesus 12 years. I've been in Jesus for 65 years. But when he said comes, he's talking to the one who's ready. Thank you. You, you can use that church history on me if you want to. <laughs> Being in Jesus a long time does not mean you stay sitting down when God says it's time to shout. And we need to stop thinking that young people with problems and issues are the only one that can praise God. We're older people, and we still praise God. As a matter of fact, I have made up in my mind, I ain't letting nobody under 30 out praise me. You're going to be tired when you go to church. But you got to be ready to go, you got to be ready to do, and you got to be ready to try. And God will lead you where you need to go. But you got to be ready to do, you got to be ready to go, and you got to be ready to try. Everybody say, do. Go. Try. You got to have those things going. You got to be ready to go. You got to be ready to do something. And you got to be ready to try. Be ready. If they're going to fire you, let them fire you. But they fired you while you were trying to work. It's bad to get fired at home. I've had people to tell me I got the job and I was working good and then six months later after having perfect scores six months later they went back and did a background check. They fired me six months but one day they went back and audited my record and they found out that I had something in my past that made me not eligible for the job. I didn't get fired because I wasn't doing anything. I got fired because I tried to do something. Had I never applied, they never would have fired me. Let me speak to you, somebody in here who's afraid of trying. Get out of your boat. Put in another application. Get out of your boat. Give God something else. Stop being afraid that somebody's gonna look up your past. Let them look. There's always something in your past. And there's a story of God bringing you out that's in your past. And the only reason God let you get that job was to prove to you that he got you when you got out of the boat. Now who you're walking with, if he can give it to you before, he'll give it to you again. God will help you achieve when you take the first step and try. The first step is trying. Is, is everybody listening to me? The first step. If you've ever had to pray for somebody, that's hard. Ooh, it really is. It, it, it really is hard. When you try to pray for somebody the first time, you never prayed for somebody before, it's hard. It's hard. It, it really is. It seems like it's easy, but it's hard. It's easier to say to somebody, hey, won't you, won't, you, won't you listen to my pastor on the podcast? Or won't you listen to this tape? Or won't you come to church? But boy, sometimes God's going to get, no, I want you to pray right now. And I'm going to tell you something. If you've never heard this before, it won't be like an audible voice where God, it may not. It may not be like a voice where God say, pray now. It won't be like that. <laughs> but as he say, bother you, you'll be ready to walk away and God say, you need to pray for them. And you go, ooh-wee. Then you do like this. You do like this. You, you be way away from them. I missed it, Lord. And you still know where they are. <laughs> it's like when you pass people on the freeway and you want to help them change the tire and you're going fast and go, ooh, that's a lady. Oh, but I can't get off right now. It says it hurts you. So sometimes God will say pray right now. And y'all, that's hard. That's the hard part. That's real hard. Okay, so let's do a practice right now. Just grab that person. Don't even grab them because people don't want you grabbing them. Maybe just touch a little bit. Maybe an elbow or something. You know, just touch, or touch them. If you can, touch your hand. And, and then right now, see, first thing you knew, oh, Lord, I don't know what to say. But they may have told you 15 or 20 different things. So the first thing you don't do, let's say, let's say, you know, you know, my, 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 my husband hit me. But this is like 2020 now, it changed. My wife whooped me. You know, because, you know, you know, ladies, y'all all into these old clothes and stuff, these little old bitty skinny things, y'all. 
all at the gym trying to fight people. But anyway, so you don't want to grab somebody and go, Lord, give her the strength to beat his head. You know, you don't want to do that. So stop touching people right now. <laughs> Because it's okay. This is my, this, this is what we're learning because this is going to be hard. You got to be ready to go. You got to be ready to do. And you got to be ready to try. Remember, because you stepped out of the boat. Now, you're not stepping out of the boat to show out. You're stepping out of the boat to go to Jesus. Right? And so once you come to Jesus, he said, look at us. We're walking together now. Peter, they were walking together. Mm, mm, mm. So they're walking together. Why is he walking with them? Because he stepped away from his friends. So one of the good ways to, to prove people that you got it is now you're walking with him, and he changes your walk. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so now, now he's saying, so who you're walking with now? I'm walking with you, Lord. If you are, touch that lady and pray for her. Oh, wait a minute, snap. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lord, I can't touch that lady. You can, but I can. I just need your hands. And so that's going to be hard for some of you. Because then you're going to try to be all academic with Jesus. Most precious, righteous master, Lord of hosts, the one who knoweth all things. You trying to do all these words, help me to get to the River Jordan and down by, we're no River Jordan. We, we stuck out here on 30. <laughs> and so you just kind of over your mouth and you, <laughs> and no, because it's hard. It was the first time it's hard to pray for people and it's like Lord I know I'm saved and I pray all the time but you praying for them and they might be smoking they might be cursing they might I just wanted a dollar I didn't want you to pray you praying for them and they rubbing your knuckle what you doing you snatching in Jesus name you finish praying for them your hands smell like skunk weed you now, now, now you can't go to church no, I'm just giving you some real stuff. You praying for them. You trying to pray in Jesus' name. They think, boy, she got rough hands. You know, it's like a lot of stuff is going through there. Y'all need to grow up. I'm trying to deliver a word. But a lot of things happen. Because says, if you can get ready, I want you to be ready to what? Go and be ready to do and be ready to try. How many people are still held captive because we're free, but we don't want to go get nobody else? Our ministry this year, y'all, after 30 years, we're, we're into evangelism. Amen. God is saying, you've been real good by coming, but you're not real good by sharing this. Amen. They don't believe you. They don't believe you because... They can bring up something worldly and, oh, you're going to talk about that for 35, 40 minutes. You'll take over the conversation. You're not going to keep a job. You're not going to keep a relationship. You're not going to keep a peace of mind because you're not ready to go. You're not ready to do. You're not ready to try. You're just tired of being broke. That doesn't make you ready to go. You're tired of being lonely. That does not make you ready to do. You're tired of not having enough. That doesn't make you ready to try. That just make you tired. <laughs> that blessed somebody, didn't it? Didn't that right now just bless somebody? You don't have to say amen or anything. So I'm going to tell you one more quick story, and then we're going to move out of here. So it's, it's, always, it's always too soon to quit. Um, so yeah, it's just the truth. You can never... Be defeated, though, until you quit trying. Um, when God is involved, just when it appears that all hope is gone, then the unexpected happens. We talked about doing the impossible. That's when the impossible takes place. Now, I'm telling some of you this because you've never experienced this yet. You've been pretty good at being a Christian, and all your prayers have been answered, and things have been good, good so far. But now... This part here about evangelizing, going out and helping others. Satan's never really had any reason to block you because you're totally ineffective as a Christian. Did you just, did you just, did you just condemn me, Pastor Ruth? Did you just judge me? No. I just read you. 
Because Satan has no reason to bother you because you're not bothering anything that keeps him effective. You got a man, but you're not leading him to Jesus. You got a woman, but she's leading you further away and you're not coming. He's not, why would he fool with you? That tool is working good. You got children, and they're keeping you further and further away from church. You got a job, and it's keeping you so busy now. <laughs> if God ain't on your schedule, I'm sorry, G. Y'all should have let me know earlier. I would have come, maybe. When you start this evangelism, when you start evangelism, evangelizing, when you start trying to bring people to Christ, help people come to church, help people hear the word, Sometimes you don't know how to break it down to them. Say, can, can you just go sit with me today, man? Where are we going? I'm just going to church. Ah, that's okay. Just go. And, and, and maybe that one time God will speak to them and they'll never, ever, 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 ever have to come back again. And if it's from God, they'll never, ever, 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 ever forget it. Why? Because you did what he said do. Now, the minute you start doing that, Satan is going to try to block everything you do. That's where that though he falls comes in. You may try to figure out well, why did he fall? Because you're trying to do what God said. Real quick, real quick. I'm almost done. Peter was cool until Jesus said what? That wasn't good? Yeah. And when Jesus said come, Peter stepped out. Did what he said. Then start going down because now Satan is like, dude, you're about to affect this faith thing. I got all these boys in here thinking that they're his disciples because they run with him, but they're totally ineffective. They just got good speeches, but they can't heal nothing. They can't bless nothing. They can't do nothing because they're not ready. Well, this is, this is messing somebody up good tonight and, and especially me. And so when you step out, you're, you're messing up. If, they, if, if this joker here does this, they're going to all think they can walk. And they're going to all start believing God. They're going to all start saying, Lord, let me come to you. The minute you overcome something, every person who knows you is going to want to know, girl, how'd you lose that weight? How'd you grow your hair? How'd you get your skin so smooth? How'd you get your teeth so... See, every time you do something in the natural, don't people want to copy that? So whenever God does something that doesn't look like it's possible for you to do with no degree, with no man, with no children, with no wife, with no something, and you keep pushing, somebody's bound to ask you, how did you do that? And that's when you say, ha-ha, God ordered my steps, but before I got where I am, I fell a few times. Tell them about it. Tell them about the time you prayed for somebody and they got sick. Tell them about it. It's okay. <laughs> Man, tell them about the time you paid tithes and offering and your car still got towed away. Tell them about it. So now the impossible gets ready to happen. There's a lady, I don't know what her name was. We talk about her at church a lot. Oh Lord, I got 16 more steps. I mean, 16 more minutes. <laughs> so this lady y'all she was I'm talking about doing the impossible okay and, and so we got to have a quick meeting so I got to get out she 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 was she was um she was sick and she was sick for a long time and she was um she was sick the bible says for about 12 years with this with this one kind of issue that doesn't mean that that was her only issue but this one was more prominent than all the other issues maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more sunday morning if y'all will help me by saying amen instead of i heard this it could be cool that you heard this but you heard this before you went through your issue when you go through your issue and say preach preach why because now i'm in it She went to all the physicians, which means she has some money. So, okay, this is not about a poor woman. Okay, you don't go to all these different doctors unless you got some money. So, I'm talking about the money sister in here now. Uh-huh. And so, she went to many physicians and gave them all the money. And the Bible said, you know, you think if you went to all these doctors, you get better. The Bible was cold-blooded. The Bible said she got worse. That is some bad news. 
I don't want to read some scripture where the woman went to all the doctors and she went to all the physicians and, and she got worse. What? <laughs> what? what is and it, okay, okay, okay. I'm so comfortable. But be honest. Anybody ever went to the doctor and you, and you got worse? <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, so this is me by myself tonight. Wait, anybody else raise your hand? Let me see who you are out there. Okay, yeah, you went to all these doctors and got worse. That's me. I went to like seven or eight different doctors. It got to the point where when I went to the doctor, I started acting like them dogs at the vet. Just put me on the table. You tell me what's wrong with me. I'm not telling nobody else. <laughs> and so I'm worse. And when you come from the doctor, people say, well, how was it? Now, after a while, you don't know if you're using your faith or lying. You say, well, I'm healed. That's the truth, according to God's word. But I feel horrible. Those are the facts, according to how Satan's attacking you. I just said something that was very strong. I'm healed, according to God's word. But I'm feeling like I'm not going to make it, according to the facts. So when you go to the doctor, you give him the facts because he can't x-ray the truth. Which is why some of us, my hand and all my fingers are pointing toward me. That's why some of us keep going to the doctor and they can't find nothing wrong. You're frustrated because the truth is working. <laughs> you want to sue somebody because the facts ain't out. They got you taking all kind of medication. Medication making you tired. Medication keeping you from work. Medication making you late to work. But the truth is keeping you strong. So on one end, you look like a fake liar. On the other end, you look like somebody that God's doing the impossible. <laughs> and so you're going through for 12 years, man. Who can tolerate what you've gone through this long? Someone who lives by the truth? Because the truth has set you what? There you go. So this woman went through it for 12 years. Spent all she had. And got worse. Now, I want to stop with that, but I'm not. So, so when she got worse, so let's, just, let's just kind of wrap this a little bit. We can talk about it Sunday, maybe. maybe. When, when she got worse, um, if you look at the Bible, you'll notice it didn't seem, she didn't seem to know when she was defeated. The Bible said that this woman suffered pain. She was mis in misery and she had suffered rejection because she was around people. She wasn't around people that she could, was supposed to be around. She was around other people that were going through the same stuff that she was going through. So that's loneliness, you know, that's, that's, that's misery, that's rejection, you know, all that stuff we talked about when you step out of the boat. All these folk are looking at you. Okay, now let me, let me just put a spin on it and tail on it and we'll leave out of here. She didn't know, she didn't, she didn't know, she didn't, she didn't know, she didn't know how to stop pushing. Because when she heard that Jesus could fix it, and maybe tonight is the first night that some of you are hearing that the Lord knows you're down. So quit telling him how far you're down. Start telling him, Lord, I'm depending on you to lift me. See, okay, 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 okay. Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so, so she know, he knows you're down. Okay, now, you may not want to tell everybody else because they may celebrate it. They can't handle the facts because the facts look like you're losing. So you have to tell them the truth. The Lord will bring me out. Okay. You run out of gas, you tell them the facts. I'm out of gas. Right? Because God has sent somebody to help you get gas. So she heard that Jesus could heal her. No, she didn't. She heard that Jesus healed somebody else. 
And I think I want to kind of start this way, maybe, maybe start this way on Sunday. She heard that somebody, that he had healed somebody else. She heard that he had done all these things for other people. And the Bible said that she said to herself, if you're going to talk to yourself, girl, talk some good stuff. It's okay to talk to yourself, but quit talking this junk. <clears throat> She said to herself, if I can just get to this man. She didn't say have a conference. Let me wrap this up. I said that about three times, didn't I? She didn't say let me have a conference. She didn't say I want him to pray for me. She said if I can just, because what I've heard, I've heard from some people who I believe, Johnny, I believe these people. She said, I heard some people say some stuff, and these people were sick when they said it. And they were telling me about what he did. That's evangelism. Come on, y'all. I, I got to close with why we're here. You see, you may not be able to help anybody, but you can say what he did. And that, I don't mean this one, I'm going to say it. That joker over there, that joker was just trying to look at how fine you were. But you got to tell your story to this other girl at McDonald's. And this joke over here was like, I kind of heard y'all over talking like that. What, what, what y'all having that? What is going on? And so she just overheard it. And says, shoes, since I've already tried everything else, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go and I'm just going to touch him. See, most of us in this room would have given up because, oh, he too big. <laughs> he got all these people around him. He ain't going to touch me. Forget him touching you. Oh, y'all want to preach it now? If you need it, Amaya, what did we say, baby? If I throw out the rope, what's your job? You reach out. Quit talking about everybody's not helping you. You reach out. They cannot deny you. I think I'm going to stay in that zone for just a minute Sunday morning. We're talking about doing the impossible. This woman had to go against everything. And I know that woman's a member of this church. I know that woman goes to Ibach. There is no way that God would allow us to go 30 years in preaching if that woman is not a member here. That woman knows how to press. That woman knows how to push. That woman there didn't even know when it was over, she didn't even know that it was done. She didn't even know she couldn't be helped. She didn't even know that everybody was laughing at her. She didn't even know that they had ridiculed her. She didn't even know that if they catch her, she didn't care. Because once she heard, and faith cometh by, that's why the devil wants to shut you up. Stop being quiet. Stop it. I command in Jesus' name that everybody in this section stop being quiet. Everybody in this section, stop being quiet. Everybody here, stop being quiet. Everybody here, stop being quiet. Stop telling people why you serve God, why you sing, why you praise, why you come to Monday school. They don't want you. They want your answers. All right, I, I'm just going to stop if, if, but, but, but I'm going to tell you what she heard right quick. Because she kept going, I'm going to tell you what she heard. I might want to stop right here about what she heard. Because some of y'all don't know about what she heard. Okay, well, church is over. Say amen. amen. Now we're going to go after church for just a second here. I just want to tell you what she heard. Buck Acts tells us that she heard how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, filled with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. That's what she heard. If I can get to that dude right there, wherever he is, if God is with, she heard that God was with him. People don't know that God is with you because you don't tell them. You tell them about your financial status. You tell them about your mental state. You tell them about how depressed you are. You tell them about your kids. You tell them about your booze, all of them. How many times your heart been broken? They already know that. How you lost your virginity 12 times. They know all that business of yours. They know. It'll, it'll get, you'll get that tomorrow. 
They know all of that. But have they heard from you that God has anointed Jesus with power who went about doing good? And you might say, so what does that have to do with me? The word says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He lives with you. So now we understand at the beginning of the message because I didn't know that. That wasn't planned. Now we understand what God said when he said, just don't say nothing. So at the beginning of church, we stood up and we touched somebody. Some of y'all wanted power. You wanted prayer. You want somebody to pray over you. Sometimes God says, no, just touch him. Just touch him. I would have thought when that woman grabbed that robe, she would have went to praying and God would have... Jesus would have went to her in the name of Jesus. Satan, get out of this woman and release her. And that woman said nothing. And she got everything. Because she believed that if she could just touch. Y'all, and you know what's so cold-blooded about this story? She never touched him. She touched something that was connected to him. Okay, so right next to you right now. Somebody may not know him. Touch him right now. So they say, well, I don't believe I'm touching Jesus. That's okay. If they're touching you, they're touching somebody who's connected to him. And maybe the person next to you, you may say, I don't believe they're connected. That's okay. Maybe it skips over them and goes to the next person. And if they don't, or maybe skip them. It's somewhere on that road, somewhere in this room, they're touching somebody that's been touched by him. And that's the power that just healed you again right now. Thanks for watching and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of iBot and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? Visit us online at iBotChurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.